Good day, friends. It is me, HL Mod Tech, and I am back with another awesome Tinkercad project. So let's get cracking. Friends, I'm starting out on my website, hlmodtech.com. I have got a tab dedicated to Tinkercad. Tons of amazing lessons. And then down here at the bottom, there is a sweet built-in messaging tool. You can click that button, add your question, comment, or suggestion, and reach me almost instantly. I am highlighting it today because an awesome educator, Mr. Stem Brown, reached out saying, Hey, do you have any tricks for making an airfoil for a wind turbine in Tinkercad? Let me show you what I got. All right, friends, so super quick. The project starts with Kid Wind. You can double check this. I'm, of course, going to make my own version with Tinkercad, but I just wanted to alert you that this is where the idea came from. If you've never used Tinkercad before, simply visit Tinkercad.com. Once you're there, we're going to hit New, and we're going to choose 3D Design. I always like to start by naming things. Let's call this Airfoil. I'm going to reuse Airfoil part, and I'm going to put a V2 after it. The part we're going to play with is called the extrusion. You can click search and type EXT to get the extrusion. When this little guy comes out, he has got these amazing handles that lets you create an airfoil. So what I'm going to do is stretch this out, stretch this out. I'm going to decide this side is the point and I'm going to squeeze it down. I'm going to move this back here. I'm going to tuck this one up in. I can give it a twist, a range and get the exact shape that I think is going to be a fun airfoil. It's that easy to work with your idea as you build something that you think is cool. Now if we come down here and look at it, you can see that is my airfoil. If you don't like it, like mine looks a little chubby, I'm going to stretch it out and adjust it again until I get the exact design that I think is a cool airfoil. So I think this is what I'm going to experiment with. I do want to make it wider. So before I go any further, I'm going to quickly search up wind turbine airfoil images. So here you can see one that is pretty slick. It shows how it starts with a solid area and then it has shapes inside that squeeze all the way down until you finally get to the tip. Now this is what we're trying to simulate in Tinkercad. So if we go back to my project, check it out. That kind of simulates one of those parts. We're going to make each of these sections called ribs. Now I have a really slick way for making these go up and get smaller and twist a little bit as they're being built. Let me show you how that works. In your design, I always use cardboard for these type of projects. So I'm going to make it 4 millimeters thick. Also currently it is 50 millimeters across. I'm going to scale this out so it's closer to 70. I'm also going to make it a little pudgier. That's going to be my bottom design. Now I'm going to remind you that once you start this process, if you click anywhere else, it cancels it. So the steps are like this. Click on your shape when you're happy with it. Do control D. I want to move it up 30 millimeters. So I'm going to do control shift up arrow one, two, three. So I'm spacing this out. Do not touch anything else. And then I'm going to shift shrink it a little. You get to pick how much you adjust by each layer, and then I'm also going to rotate it just a couple degrees. So carefully click that rotation handle. If you come out, you can go one degree at a time. I'm going to rotate mine negative four degrees and let go. And then if you don't touch anything else, every time you do control D, it memorizes that step. So that's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then if I zoom out, you can see how I just made a pretty darn amazing airfoil in one simple step. Now you can go up and adjust each of these individually. This just gets you started. But you can see how this is a pretty neat technique for making a custom airfoil almost instantly. All right, friends, quickly before we go any further, let me show you how these come together. There is a piece that goes in between to give them strength. And then you also need to have a piece out here on the end. You can see these both show how these edges stay together. If you forget those edges, you can end up with scalloping, which is really not what you want. These are what they look like when they're covered in shrink wrap. 
this is how thin they are and you can see there is a slight curve in them and here you can see it before it gets put in the wind tunnel all right so here we go getting this so that this pin connects through all of these shapes the first thing i'm going to tell you to do is hold down shift stretch it to crazyville type 6.6 .6 and press enter the dowels that are used in this class are quarter inch and 6.6 .6 is a good estimate for a quarter inch dowel I'm going to stretch this up longer than the project shape and if we bring it out we get to look at it and see if it's actually going to work with our project. You can see that as the project gets smaller out here that dowel is not going to fit perfectly. I need to look at it from a corner and get it so that it connects to the shape. So there's my rotation handle and I want it to go through all of the pieces. I'm going to use the arrow keys to nudge it in place. You can see that's working at the bottom but not the top. So I'm going to just go one degree at a time until I find a place where it intersects. That's pretty sweet. And then I'm going to stick with this. If you've got a smaller dowel, you could use that. I'm also thinking you could end up shaving these after you get the dowel inserted to get the exact shape you want. You can see that this one does have a little bit of meat up here. I can also easily stretch it so that it has just a tiny bit more. With that in place though, we need to cut these all separately. So let me show you how we're going to do that. First, work plane. First, I'm going to put the work plane up here on the top and I'm going to push it below. The reason we did that was so that it was poking through to make sure it cut. Now I'm going to click on this and I'm going to do control D and I'm going to do shift nudge two clicks away. So that way it's out of the way of the project. Now I can grab this and do control G and that part is built. I'm going to do shift nudge to move it away from printing. I'm going to click on my tube and do control D. I'm going to shift nudge twice out. I'm going to carefully grab those two pieces, do control G, D to drop because that piece is now complete. Now if you notice that one disappeared that's because my work plane was still up here in the sky. Now if I do D, you can see it's out there where it's supposed to be. Sorry about that. So, back out here on the hole. Control D, shift nudge. Select those two pieces. Control G to group. D to drop. Shift nudge and move it out to where you want it for printing. And we repeat this process all the way up. Remember it's always Control D, shift nudge control g d to drop as you build your awesome airfoil now i'm also putting them in order which will be handy for assembly later but continue that process till you're all complete all right friends at this time make sure you got them all set to the same height i'm going to set them all the four millimeters thick that's what i would laser cut if you're 3D printing these, you'll probably have a plan for how thick you want them each to be as well. The reason they all got consecutively smaller was because of that duplicate and shrink trick that we used. Just a reminder, you need a solution to prevent scalloping. I'm going to do that real quickly. So friends, I'm going to add those pieces really quick. And this is where you can find out that everything you did isn't fine. I'm going to add real quick a little 2 millimeter notch on each of these. The steps are going to look like this. Shift, shrink, type 2 millimeters. I'm going to do F to fit view so I can see that a little better. And I'm going to make it 3 millimeters long. And then I'm just going to nudge that into place. I do need to make it at least 4 millimeters tall. I'm going to make it 5 so it's easier to grab. And then I just have to put those on each part. Control D. I'm going to do shift nudge to get it down here and find the place where I want it to be on this end. Note you can rotate and adjust as necessary. If you can't see that end handle to grab, it's all about finding an angle that lets you get it exactly like you want. You can also set your nudge to super tiny, so you can just move it with the arrow keys to the exact spot that you think is pretty dandy. I'm gonna try and move these as a pair, so I'm going to do shift select to grab the two of them if i do control d i can shift nudge to get them close that one obviously goes out there this one i'll once again do a shift nudge because i've got that 0.1 millimeter on and i'm just going to nudge them into place 
continue that all the way around and when you're happy just come back and do control G to group each part all right everybody so there you can see how it was working using that strategy i think this has a ton of potential but i do want to warn you when you build this make sure that your final piece is a size that you can work with i stretched mine a little but not enough these final pieces are only two centimeters that's going to be way too small if we look back at the templates that were shared with me these are about six centimeters which is probably a wiser place to end your airfoil all right friends there was one more question about how you could possibly add a winglet if you click search there is an amazing shape called the swept nasa if you search for that, you'll be able to bring it in. This has so many parameters so you could make it fit what you wanted. You could even use some techniques to cut out so that it actually had a curve or you could do anything you wanted. And then what I would do is I would 3D print this and I would attach it to your built wing structure. You could maybe have pins, you could maybe glue it on, but I think that would be the slickest way to build your winglet. I do wanna let you know that you can really mess with this so notice the sweep angle. You can bring it back to middle. You can just change everything as you make an awesome winglet for your airfoil. Friends, I want to say thanks again to Mr. Brown for sharing this project with me. I think it's absolutely awesome, and I think there's a ton of potential for you to use this technique to make awesome airfoils. Of course, friends, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. Please also hit that share button so more people can learn about HL Mod Tech. Don't forget you absolutely make my day if you take time to add a comment down below. And if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Smash that subscribe button, and last but not least, hit that notification bell if you want to be the first to know when there's a brand new video from me, HL Mod Tech. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.